Welcome to Pure Public Goods. So pure public goods are one of our market failures. Again, a situation where markets don't lead to the right amount of actions being done. So resources are going to the wrong place. Some, uh, some actions are happening too much, some actions are happening too little, um, but we're not getting the right amount of, of certain actions. Okay, so before we get into what pure public goods are, we're gonna talk about four categories of goods, one of which is the pure public goods. But we're going to consider two characteristics of goods, uh, rivalry and excludability. Okay, and we'll have a table uh, where we have excludable goods, non-excludable goods, rivals goods, and non-rivals goods, and then four categories of goods uh, based on how they fit into that framework. Okay, so rivalrous goods are goods where one person's use of that good affects another person's use. So like a taco. If I eat a taco, no one else can eat that taco. Or a dog. If I own this dog, no one else can own this dog. Uh, or a house. If I own a house, no one else can own that house. Uh, or a chair. If I sit in a chair, it would be super awkward if someone else also sat in that chair. Or if I'm reading a book, someone could read over my shoulder, but that's a really different experience from a person reading their own book. Um, okay, so that's rivalrous goods. And so you might be asking yourself, wait, that sounds like every good. You're pretty much right. Uh, almost all the goods that you experience uh, or objects you experience are rivalrous. One person's use does affect another person's use. Okay, then we have non-rivalrous goods. So these are goods where one person's use doesn't affect another person's use. Uh, and again, these are pretty rare. Um, so uh, an example might be fireworks, right? If there's a fireworks show and someone else starts watching the fireworks show, it doesn't dim the fireworks for everyone else everyone can enjoy the fireworks regardless of how many people are watching. Uh, or a, um, a YouTube video, right? If you're watching this YouTube video that didn't kick someone else off from watching this YouTube video. Okay? Lots of people can watch the YouTube video without affecting the others. Okay? So obviously within a certain range, um, right? But any uh, internet page would have this characteristic um, as well as a statue, right? So lots of people can look at the statue without affecting someone else's ability to also come and look at the statue. Um, okay, or watching television in, in your living room, right? If your sibling comes into your living room and starts watching TV with you, that doesn't dim the TV, right? You both can enjoy watching the TV. So it's non-rivalrous. Okay. And then we have excludability. So our, our set of characteristics. If a good is excludable, that means one person, or sorry, that means uh, you can stop people who don't pay for that good from using it. So that is to say, to get the good, you have to pay for it, or someone has to pay for it. Okay? So if you want food, someone had to pay for that food, right? You or your parents. Uh, if you want a TV, you have to buy a TV. If you want Netflix, you have to buy a subscription. Okay? Um, so a, mo most goods are excludable, right? Again, almost all the goods you could think of would be excludable. You have to pay, or someone had to pay, to get access to that good. You couldn't use it if you didn't pay. Um, but then we have non-excludable goods. And these are gonna be goods where non-payers can use the good. You, you can't stop non-payers from using that good even if they don't contribute. So these goods are either gonna be goods where the company could exclude the good and could make people pay for it, but they choose not to. So like free Wi-Fi at Starbucks, right? They could put a password on that Wi-Fi and only give the password to people who buy something but they choose to make it open to anyone. So they choose to make it non-excludable. But then there are also goods where the nature of the good is such that there's no way you could possibly exclude non-payers reasonably. So like the fireworks. So if the you put on a fireworks show, you're not gonna go around blindfolding everyone who didn't pay to contribute to the fireworks show. So um, that's non-excludable by nature, right? Anyone from miles around can watch the fireworks show whether they paid or not. Okay. Um, Right, and the, the public statue, right? Anyone can come and walk by and look at that statue, uh, right? If it's in public, you're not charging admission for people to walk in and see it. Um, good, yeah, so pretty much anything in, in public that anyone can use is non-excludable. Okay, so that's the excludable, non-excludable, and rivalrous, non-rivalrous.